Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at inclined plane problems. We're going to look at three types of problems that you see for inclined planes. And before looking at these problems, I really want to understand how we tackle forces when there is an inclined plane, when there's a surface at an angle. It's a little bit different. Uh, the three problems I specifically want to look at are um, going to include forces like gravity, friction, uh, the normal force, the tension. First problem is what if I just let it go and it slides down the ramp? All right, how would you find the speed at the bottom of the ramp? And how would you find how much time it takes to go down the ramp? Now, next problem, what if I launch the block up the ramp? I give it an initial velocity of some value, and I want to know how far it goes before coming to a stop. Right? So how would I solve that problem? What if there was friction involved in that problem? The last one will be an equilibrium problem. I'm simply going to tie a string uh, to that block, uh, something like this. Right, and I'm gonna connect that to the wall. How would I find, for example, the tension in that string if the block doesn't move? All right, so let's go and get started with these problems. First, let's set up the forces, the free body diagram of the block on this inclined plane. I'll show you how to do that in detail, and it's gonna set up the rest of the solutions for us. All right, let's get started. All right, we first have to look at a very important force, which is always present in these problems, and that is the weight of the block. All right, so our block here is going to be assumed to have a certain mass, all right? So the mass is simply going to be m, okay? Now, the weight, you should know that the weight, you go to the center of mass, or you just represent the object by a single point, and now all you do for the weight is you simply make a vector that goes straight down, okay? Now, the magnitude of that vector is simply the mass of that block. Well, let's use the same letter here. Um, I should have capital M multiplied by little g. Okay, so that is an important force that acts on the block. Now, another force that acts on the block is the normal force. All right, so what do we do about the normal force? Now, in mathematics, normal force, or the word normal, simply means perpendicular to the surface. So let me just write that down. Perpendicular to the surface. In this case, this is the surface, right, where the block is resting. So perpendicular to the surface is simply like this, and I'm going to call this N for the normal force. Now, we see right away we have a problem, right? We have forces that are not in the same direction, and this one is kind of at an angle relative to the normal. So what do you do in this case, right? It's a little bit harder. Now, this is my tip for all of these problems. Now, in all problems, you typically have to choose a coordinate system, and mostly we use coordinate systems that do this, basically because math has kind of brainwashed us into thinking that this is okay. And this is okay for most problems. It's actually still okay for this problem. It just becomes way too complicated. So I really don't recommend using this coordinate system. And why not? Well, first of all, if I release this block from rest and there is no friction, for example, this block is simply going to slide down the ramp. Okay. Whenever you have a situation like that, it's always best to use at least one axis that is pointing along the direction of the motion. If you know what it is, sometimes you don't. But in this case, let's just say that the block will slide down the ramp. So I'm going to call the direction down the ramp my positive x direction. And I'm going to call my direction perpendicular to the ramp. I'm going to call that the positive y direction. So right away, we see that the normal force is simply along the y direction. Now, the weight, on the other hand, is not along the x nor the y, but it has a component of each. So our goal now is really to break the weight down into two components. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of draw in a little bit of the coordinate system. This is kind of like the negative y-axis. And I'm going to go ahead and just plot what the x direction looks like for this problem. It makes breaking this vector down a little bit easier if you have a clear figure. Right? I find students sometimes make their figures so small, it's very, very hard to see. All right, so if I want to break this vector down into two components, this is what it looks like. There should be at least one component of the vector here that acts down the ramp. Right? And if I continue, this here would be, again, using my coordinate system, this would be the weight that is along the x direction or the weight that's parallel to the ramp. Now the other component, let me pick a different color over here. Uh, the other component is the weight, a component of the weight that is along this axis right here. Right? 
this here would be the weight along the y direction or the direction that is perpendicular to the ramp. Right, let me go ahead and close off that uh, rectangle here, showing the two components clearly. So what we have to do now is, typically this angle is known. It could be 30 degrees, 20 degrees, I don't care what it is, okay? But typically you know the angle that uh, the inclined plane makes relative to the flat surface down here, okay? What we need to do now is figure out, out of all of these triangles, where is this angle theta, okay? So what we're gonna do here is, let me grab a different color and we're gonna highlight some of the different uh, triangles that we could see. First of all, if the weight goes all the way down, you should realize that this here should be a right angle, a 90 degree angle right here. And if you follow this triangle right here, right, the one that includes the angle theta and this 90 degrees, that means whatever angle this is up here, I'm gonna call it alpha, is I really have to have that alpha plus theta must be equal to 90 degrees. Because at the end of the day, I end up adding a right angle to that. And I know if I sum the three angles of a triangle, those should be 180 degrees. So that means that the two other angles should be 90 when I add them. All right, so we've done a lot of work. So for example, if we know that uh, this angle uh, theta here is 30 degrees, I automatically know that alpha uh, has to be 60 degrees, right? In this particular case because both of those 30 plus whatever has to be 90, so it must be 60. All right, I'm gonna go one step further now. Now again, if I look at the two angles now between the weight in the x direction and the weight in the y direction, again, this is also another 90 degree angle over here. So that means if this here is alpha, you should be able to convince yourself that this angle over here, and this is really the one I like, this here's also the angle theta. So if this is 30 degrees, that means that this angle, the way I've drawn it in the figure should also be 30 degrees. Now what this allows me to do is easily write down the components. Let me go ahead and fill out the rest of this tr uh, rectangle right here. This is the weight in the x direction. Again, the weight is simply the red vector, the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. So let's go ahead and write that. So what would it look like for my expressions? So I could write that sine of the angle theta is simply equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that would be the weight along the x direction the way I've defined it over the hypotenuse, which is the total weight of the block. So if I rearrange this, I can get an expression for this component of the weight, the weight which I've called along the x direction as mg multiplied by sine of the angle theta. Okay, a really, really important equation right here. Let's go ahead and highlight that one. So that is the component of the weight that is acting down the ramp. Let's look at the other expression. Okay, again, I'm gonna use this angle and I'm gonna use my triangle right here. I could write an expression for cosine of the angle theta. Cosine of the angle theta is the adjacent, which in this case is the weight along the y direction divided by the hypotenuse, which again is mg. All right, if I rearrange this equation, I'm gonna have that the weight along the y-axis is going to be equal to mg multiplied by cos of the angle theta. And this is the second really, really important equation when you're dealing with a block on a slope. If you can understand both of these equations, you're off to a really, really good start. Right? So we know that this component is the component that accelerates the block down the ramp, right? because it's a force acting down the ramp in this case. All right, now let's go back to our three problems. We're going to look at free body diagrams in different cases, but in all our cases, we're gonna to have to break the weight down into an X component and into a Y component. And to analyze most of these problems, it's usually always best to use this type of coordinate system right here that I've depicted, where we have one axis that is directed along the ramp and one axis that is perpendicular to the ramp. All right, here's problem one. Let's find the time to get down the ramp and the speed at the bottom. So here's what I have. I have a ramp that has a height of 1.2 meters. My block has a mass of 3.5 kilograms. It's a frictionless surface and uh, the angle that the ramp makes with respect to the horizontal is 35 degrees. All right, so let's set this problem up. First thing you have to do is a free body diagram.
All right, so again, just like we did before, we have our weight, which is acting straight down. That has a magnitude mg. And we shall also have a normal force in this problem. That is the surface of the ramp pushing up on the block perpendicular to the surface. That is something we call a normal force. Now, my physics ninja tip was to consider a coordinate system where the block is moving like this. So we're going to choose the x direction to be down the ramp. And I'm going to choose y to be perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. Now, again, if we remember what we previously did, we wrote that the weight can be broken down into two components. I call this the weight in the x direction. And this here was the weight in the y direction. All right, and these components, if you remember what we just did, this was mg sine of the angle theta, sine of 35 in this case. And this guy here was mg cos of the angle theta. All right, the next thing I really have to do, let me clean up this kind of vector right here. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna write down Newton's laws of motion for this block. Okay, um, so what that means is I want to write down the sum of the forces along both axes. Okay, sum of the forces along the x direction and the sum of the forces along the vertical direction. Now, along the vertical direction, we have two forces. We've got the normal force and we've got this perpendicular component of the weight, right? Um, those forces, when I add them up, they're probably have to sum to zero, right? Otherwise, the block would fly off the ramp or into the ramp, and that's not what is going on. All right, and how about in the x direction? In the x direction, we only have a single force, right? We only have Wx. So it's not going to be equal to zero. It's going to be equal to the mass of the block multiplied by the acceleration, right? This is Newton's second law at work right here. All right, so what does this term look like? Well, this is simply equal to Wx. In the vertical direction, we've got two. So we've got the normal acting up. I'm going to call that positive n. And we've got the weight in the vertical direction acting down, right? That's this component of the weight acting down. Okay, now I'm going to substitute my values of Wx and Wy. So let's go ahead down here. So we have mass times acceleration in the x direction. Uh, this here equals mg sine of the angle theta. Now look what I have. I have mass on both sides. Well, guess what? I could eliminate that one. And now I'm left with just one expression for the acceleration in that direction parallel to the surface of the ramp, all right? The acceleration ends up being g sine theta. Let me highlight that, that's an important result. We're gonna use that in just a minute to do some kinematics. Let's have a look at what we get in the vertical direction. So that's using our second uh, equation here for forces. Uh, in that direction, we end up finding that the normal force is simply equal to the weight in the vertical direction. So that is mg cos of the angle theta. Okay, so we now have an expression for the normal force. In this case, it doesn't really help us, but later on, if we look at a friction problem, we may need to calculate what the normal force is. All right, let's go ahead now and calculate our acceleration. So we get 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity, little g, and we get sine of 35 degrees. I substitute everything in here. I should get around 5.62 meters per second squared. All right, let's go back now to our original question. We're looking for the time. How much time does it take to travel this distance? Now, we're not specifically told that distance. However, we are told the height. So maybe we could calculate that distance, right? Let's have a look at the triangle right here. All right, this is really the distance that we're looking for. All right, we're gonna call this distance x. I think if we use a little bit of trigonometry, we should be able to figure out an expression for that distance x, right? Imagine here you use sine of 35 degrees because x is simply the hypotenuse of that triangle. H is the opposite side, so this is simply h over x, uh, which means at the end that x is going to be h over sine of theta or sine of 35 degrees. All right, so we can actually go ahead and calculate that. Uh, this is 1.2 meters, and this here is sine of 35 degrees. Um, anyway, you can actually get an expression for that. Uh, I'm not too concerned with that right now. Let's go ahead now and find the time. So how would you find the time? Uh, we know an acceleration. Uh, we know the distance that we want to travel here. I could just put that in the calculator and evaluate it. So now we're going to use our kinematic equations. All right, and one of our kinematic equations uh, if you remember, should look like this. 
right, that my x displacement, all right, delta x, or I'll just call it x in this case, uh, is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half the acceleration multiplied by t squared. Now, in this case, remember, we're starting from rest, so the initial velocity term is equal to zero. And all I'm looking for here is how do I solve for this time? So we're gonna do a little bit of algebra here. We're gonna get time by itself. So you bring the two on the other side, you divide by a, and then you take the square root of my expression. And I should get something like this. So this is two x uh, over a. And I can actually take it a step further now and substitute in all our numbers. Uh, my x value was 1.2 divided by sine of 35 degrees, okay? And my acceleration value I calculated earlier was 5.62. Uh, uh, putting everything now in the calculator, uh, what you should get is approximately 0 0.86 seconds. All right, so that is the time to go down the ramp. All right, and the next question was, well, what is the speed here at the bottom, right? How would I find the speed of the block at the bottom? Again, now that you know the time and you know the acceleration, we have another kinematic equation, right? Another kinematic equation looked like this, that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. All right, so again, we're noting the fact that we're starting from rest, so forget about this guy. And now, well, you simply substitute it in our numbers. So we get 5.62 multiplied by 0 0.86 for that particular problem. And my final speed uh, at the bottom would be uh, 4.83 uh, meters per second. Okay, so kind of a nice starting problem. Now let's go look at something, a little variation of this problem uh, for problem two. All right, problem two, you wanna know how far will the block slide up the ramp? So in this case here, I'm giving it an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. And in addition to gravity, what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to put friction on the surface between the block and the ramp. So that means we must add another force to the free body diagram of the block. In this case here, I'm gonna add an additional force. This here is the force of friction and I'll call it F sub K for kinetic friction. All right, I know the components of the weight, so I can go ahead and just add those to my diagram if I wanted to, right? The perpendicular component of the weight, which I call WY, goes like this. And the weight along the X direction should look like this. All right, so what are we going to do now? Well, let's go ahead and apply Newton's laws to this problem. Okay, so we're gonna have the sum of the forces along X direction. Again, they're gonna to have to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the block. Now look at my two forces along the X direction. They're acting down the ramp, so guess what? The acceleration is going to be down the ramp. Um, let's go ahead and evaluate this. So I get the weight along the X direction plus the force of kinetic friction must be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the block. So I could take this expression a little bit further now because I could substitute my value for the weight in the x direction. We have mg sine of theta. And what is the kinetic friction? So kinetic friction you should remember from your class. Uh, this one is a coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. All right, so let's go ahead and write that. That's our coefficient of kinetic friction. In this case, it's 0.15 multiplied by the normal force and that must equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So in order for me to calculate acceleration, I need one thing. Notice I have the normal force here. So how do I get rid of the normal force to get just an expression for the acceleration in the x direction? Well, to introduce the normal force, I'm gonna use the forces in the vertical direction. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So if I add up all of the forces in the vertical direction, I know that those should be equal to zero because the block is not flying off the surface or going into the surface. So that means you must have that the normal minus the weight in the y direction should be equal to zero. And at the end, you could simply uh, write that the normal force is equal to the weight in the y direction, which we know is mg cos theta for a block on a slope. Okay, so let's go ahead now and simplify this. What we're gonna do is substitute this normal force expression into uh, Newton's second law to find the acceleration. So let's go ahead and do that right down here. 
So this is kind of a lengthy expression. Let me switch the order here. I have mass times acceleration equals to mg sine of the angle theta, and then minus this coefficient of kinetic friction. And right here for the normal force, I'm just gonna substitute that with mg cos of the angle theta. So that's kind of a lot of algebra there. Uh, next thing we do, look at the mass is included in every term, so I can actually just eliminate it. And one last step I'm gonna do, just to tidy it up a little bit, is simply to write that the acceleration in the x direction, I'll factor out a little g, and then this is just kind of a simple expression, or a simpler looking expression than the previous one I had. Now I could substitute in all the numbers to get a number for my acceleration. So this here is 9.8. What else? We have 35 degrees, so you could substitute that in there. We have the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is a 0 0.15, and then cosine of 35 degrees. Now assuming I did that correctly, I put that in the calculator, I should get 6.83 meters per second squared. Notice I get a positive number, right? And positive is simply indicated by this direction. The positive x direction is actually down the ramp, right? So down ramp, that's the direction of my acceleration. Now my initial velocity was going up the ramp. So now I wanna know how far am I actually going to go? So I wanna know what is this distance over here that I'm going to travel, right? We can call this, say, the x displacement over here. How far am I gonna go? Now what's special about the maximum height that I'm going to reach is that my final velocity here should be equal to zero at the end of the day. All right, so again, we're gonna use some kinematic equations, okay? If you remember one kinematic equation, um, I'll just write it as kinematic equation here. Uh, one popular kinematic equation was this, v final squared equals to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. All right, so one thing to remember now is that my displacement is actually a vector that goes from the start all the way to the top. So this displacement here that I'm going to get at the end of the day is going to be a negative number because this is my coordinate system. And that's okay. Uh, the final velocity, I know that this guy here should be equal to zero. My initial, I've been told it was 15, so I could substitute that in there, and I just solve for the acceleration. So at the end, all we have to do is solve for delta x. So delta x equals to minus v0 squared over 2a. Now we substitute in all the numbers. So you get minus 15 squared over 2 times 6.83. All right, so my final displacement, and don't worry about the negative sign, right? The negative sign is only with respect to this coordinate system, okay? So I expect the displacement to be a negative value. All right, if I put everything in the calculator, did things correctly, I think I got around negative 16.5 meters as my displacement. And again, this here is only telling me the direction. All right, great. So that's how far you would end up sliding up the ramp. All right, let's look at problem three now. All right, here's problem three. Um, calculate the tension if the block here is in equilibrium. So what I've done is I've tied a string uh, from the block to a wall. I'm assuming a frictionless surface, and that's it. So let's go ahead and start with our free body diagram. So again, we have the weight acting straight down. That has a magnitude mg. Let's do the easy forces first. We still have our normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. Uh, we now have another force, right? We have a string attached to it, so we have to have a tension force, which is acting in the direction of that string. Sorry, my angle's a little bit off there. And that's it. What we do is we break down our forces using this type of coordinate system again. So the normal, we don't have to worry about. The tension, if I look at it, it's actually along the negative x direction. All I have left to do here is break the weight down, and this I've done several times already, so we should be professionals at this. And that's it, that's Wx and that's Wy. Uh, next thing we wanna do now is simply add up the forces in the x direction. Now in this case here in the x direction, since the block is what? It's in equilibrium, right? It means that if I add up all the forces on that block, they should be equal to zero in both directions, not just one. Right, well, let's scratch that off. Some of the forces in the y direction should also be equal to zero. So what do we have in the x direction? We have two, we have the weight acting down and we have the tension acting up. 
I've picked down to be the positive, right? So in this case here, I have Wx minus the tension has to be equal to zero. All I'm asked for is to calculate the tension in this problem. Well, that's super easy. The tension is simply Wx. I'm almost done. Tension equals, what is Wx? Again, we've done that before. It's simply the component of the weight that is parallel to the ramp. That's mg sine of the angle theta. At this stage, you just substitute in all the numbers and we're done. So mass was 3.5, uh, little g 9.8, and sine of uh, 35 degrees again. All right, so my tension, uh, assuming I've done that correctly, um, I should get 16.9 uh, newtons. Okay, and that's it, folks. That's a pretty straightforward equilibrium problem. Uh, nothing too complicated, but again, that's introducing another force of... Uh, involved with uh, blocks on a slope.